I have spent the last 45 hours playing the private alpha for The War Within thanks to Blizzard and this is my honest first impressions and takeaway from the private alpha and Q&A with the WoW development team. The short of it, WoW is back folks, it really is and it's bloody gorgeous and let me explain why shortly. This video is a first impressions review, I'll keep it broad, no deep dives into dungeon mechanics or boss designs if you're into those details. Live on this YouTube channel are already 6 other videos that cover literally everything you need to know from the War Within Alpha. They cover namely all 8 dungeons coming into Mythic Plus in the new expansion, preview of the brand new raid in the Rubar Palace, a full tour of the new capital city Dornogal, everything you need to know about Delves, the brand new feature coming in the expansion, and a complete playthrough of two separate dungeons, Cinderbrew Meadery and the Rookery. All these videos are neatly organized in a playlist linked in the video description and pinned comments below. So let's start, and let me talk about why the War Within signals a glorious comeback for retail WoW. We must start with Warbands. This is the new feature that stole the show at BlizzCon. The loudest cheers were reserved for this. In essence, Warband simply means account-wide progression for almost everything. It's clear why it's the top of my highlight from the alpha. Blizzard has made a monumental shift in their philosophy towards making progress shared across your entire account, across all of your characters. And they told us behind closed doors, during a press conference that starting in the war within, this is a philosophy they're adopting for the future. And from the moment I locked into the alpha, it's clear. Blizzard means business. The Warband login screen greets you. You have your characters gathered around a fireside, pets included if your class uses them, a really nice touch. But gone are the days of a singular character with a major city as your backdrop. WoW is here to embrace you playing multiple characters easily and it's more than just a login visual treat. Eon Hazikostas explained that Warband is set to redefine gameplay, emphasizing almost universal account-wide benefits everywhere. This means easier farming for transmogs, gearing for your alts where you can send gears from your main, and a general easing of previous restriction. This is a big nod to player freedom, letting us decide how we want to have fun in WoW. Gone is the old blizzard that is seen as the fun police. Gone is the belief you need to slog for your gear, your player power through repeatable and grindable dailies. Cynically seen as many of us who took a break in Shadowlands as a cheap way to boost playtime metrics. The warband feature in the private alpha was a clear indicator that the old ways are gone. And we saw this with the drops and vendor rewards in the alpha build. Account wide is here to stay. And in the private alpha, the warband feature even lets you track the same quest progress across different characters. During a closed door interview, the dev team shared with us creators that the warband is not just a new feature, but a major overhaul in terms of how they manage player data. Traditionally, while player data was character specific, requiring substantial effort to make anything account wide from the development team. Now, with the groundwork laid by the warband system, achievements, reputation gains, and gear rewards are by default account wide without additional work from the dev team. As a player who enjoys switching between classes and specs and alts for Mythic Plus, the warband implementation in the alpha is what really excites me. While it's becoming more alt friendly than ever, we're not all able to grind endlessly for power anymore in our adult life and it's comforting to know I can enjoy all my classes at a high level without the tedious grind that I used to be required to do. Next up is Delves, and I will admit I'm wrong here, especially after playing the alpha. I wasn't 100% sold on the new Delve content when it was announced at BlizzCon. I assumed back then it would be very simple, easily outgearable content. But after getting my hands on time in the alpha, I completely changed my mind. Now for a detailed deep dive on Delves, check out the dedicated video live on this channel. But here's the gist. Delves are a new type of PvE content in WoW's The War Within expansion. They are designed for solo players or small groups of up to four. As you explore the new continent, you will sometimes chance upon entrances to Delves. And Delves are scalable in difficulty, and you can select the difficulty levels and the better rewards that correspond to them as you progress. You go into Delves for various different activities, from battling enemies, rescuing allies, to defeating bosses and discovering treasures. A unique feature is the follower system, specifically Bran Bronzebeard, who has his own talent trees and abilities that levels up as you progress through the delve and you earn follower XP. It lets him learn interrupts, crowd controls, AoE DPS cooldowns, and you can even toggle amongst the other roles you don't play, for example as a tank that will be a healer or DPS. Now you might wonder, what's in it for me really as an endgame player? The answer, really straightforward, gearing your ults. As you progress on your main character, you will unlock higher tiers of delves and more importantly level up your follower. 
And this progress is applicable to the warband system. This is also echoed by Blizzard in a private Q&A. They mentioned that at the end game, your follower could become very powerful, hard carrying your freshly minted alt to get starter alt gear in delves when you first start out. And from what we know, delves provide gear in two main ways. Number one, directly at the end of each delve run is a treasure chest. And while these gear rewards might not be top of the line, they offer fair compensation for starter gear considering how you can complete the delves in 5 to 10 minutes. More importantly for endgame alt players, delves also contribute to your weekly vault. This is brand new. And the highest tier offering in delves actually gives rewards comparable to an M plus 5 in the new expansion, which is the same as doing a plus 15 key in the current season 3 of Dragonfly. Blizzard designed delves not just for players gearing fresh alts, but also for those less interested in traditional endgame content like Mythic Plus raids or PvP. This approach gives players way more freedom in how they engage with WoW, as you're doing this PvE content in a judgment-free zone. Just you, your friends, and Brand Bronzebeard. Now, during our discussion, Blizzard also highlighted that Delves would feature random changes in enemy and trap placements, keeping the content fresh as it scales. With various zones, themes, and varying difficulty tiers, I do think Delves turned out to be a great addition, especially for gearing fresh ults. It's an always-on catch-up mechanism in the future, and I intend to fully exploit it for my ults. Next up, the new Mythic Plus dungeons. Naturally, as a Mythic Plus enthusiast, I've already previewed the 8 new dungeons in a detailed video on this channel, link is in the description, but I'm impressed with Blizzard's response to community feedback on the dungeon bosses. 4 out of the 8 dungeons as of the private alpha now only features 3 bosses likely a nod to the unpopular tyrannical affix. It seems Blizzard acknowledges the dislike for tyrannical affixes on certain weeks, but they aren't quite ready to remove tyrannical entirely. So as a compromise, they're opting for fewer bosses overall. So half of the dungeons now only have three bosses. This change appears to be a direct response to player feedback about the length and taxing nature of the dungeons in Season 2 in Dragonflight Mythic Plus, which could make completing a weekly key a chore. Now, from what I've seen, the new dungeons are designed to be quicker, more streamlined, and way more snappy. For instance, the Rookery is located right beside the brand new capital city. Talk about extreme convenience to get your weekly key done. And visually, some of these dungeons are stunning. Like those in Hello Fall, featuring a gorgeous skybox with a glowing artificial light source crystal that shifts between light and dark. Reminiscent of a Naru. The purpose of this light source remains a mystery and that's for you to find out for yourself in the new expansion. And aside from that, there's a variety of fresh visual themes, including a dungeon that transits from an airship to a ground-based combat within the same instance. These new elements suggest that Blizzard is actively experimenting with dungeon environments, and that only bodes well for people like me who love Mythic Plus. Hero Talents, yet another feature I was desperate to test on the private alpha. And I can tell you, they did live up to the hype generated at BlizzCon. Now, big disclaimer, I think not all the hero talents are perfectly balanced. Some clearly need way more tuning and way more refinement. But hey, it's an alpha, and they successfully captured the essence of class expression, excitement, and freedom showcased during the BlizzCon debut. Hero talents in the War Within allows for seamless switching between hero talent choices at the click of a button. Finally, I can explore different aspects of my class fantasy without incurring any cost. A massive leap from the restrictive covenant system we had back in Shadowlands, which often felt like I was being shackled by the Jailer into specific choices. And now, I know the biggest concern about hero talents is whether Blizzard can balance them properly, considering that we had the big issue about covenant balancing in Shadowlands. However, Blizzard's handling of extensive talent trees revamp in Dragonflight gives me reasons to be optimistic. Despite the inherent challenges, the spread of spec DPS dispersion and output in raids have been more balanced than it has been for a long ass time. And yes, there will always be flavor of the month specs, no matter what. But Blizzard's quick response to feedback and adjustments during Dragonflight showed a commitment to balance and player satisfaction. Are there talent trees that need a lot more work from Dragonflight? Yes, but they are the minority. And from what I've seen in the alpha, the foundation for hero talents is solid. If Blizzard continues with diligent tuning and remains responsive to community feedback, especially those from the class forums, there's a strong potential for hero talents to be a highlight in the coming expansion. It's no small feat to tune the hero talents properly, but given their track record in the Dragonflight expansion, I'm hopeful that these new hero talents will be warmly received by the time launch day comes around. 
Next, let's talk about the story. As someone who usually focuses on Mythic Plus and the more sweaty aspects of WoW, it says a lot that I'm dedicating a segment of this video to the story of the War Within. I won't spoiler you with anything, but just know from the first zone that we got to test in the alpha build, there are already moments in the main story that made me do a double take, like did I read that correctly? During a closed door press Q&A with the Blizzard dev team, someone asked the question regarding the story, and Blizzard kept their lips sealed, almost in a you will see sort of manner, and I can't wait to see everyone's reaction to certain developments. And this is in line with what Chris Madsen said at BlizzCon. Indeed, The War Within kicks off Blizzard's most ambitious storyline to date and they wasted no time in showing you so. They're gripping threats to pull at like Zalatath leading the Nerubians and a connection to being an old god. There's the mysterious zone of Holofowl dominated by a massive Naru-like crystal that swaps between light and dark. A possible hint at the themes of the next expansion called Midnight, which revolves around the cosmic battle between light and void. And remember, these are just public details that we learned from BlizzCon. The alpha was packed with unexpected twists, and I'm just being careful here regarding spoilers. Reflect on the success of Wrath of the Lich King. It was successful because it hinged on the anticipation that was being built up from knowing that the Lich King will one day arrive ever since WoW Classic. So when the famous Wrath trailer finally dropped, it set the internet on fire. And The War Within aims to capture that type of excitement setting the stage for a three expansion saga similar to the arc of WoW Classic, TBC, and then Wrath. And from what I've seen from the first few quests in the alpha, we are in for a thrilling start, and I can't wait to see your community reaction when the story unfolds. The next thing to cover is not really a feature, but it's a commitment. Blizzard continues to listen. And this commitment to listening to player feedback is clearly evident in the recent Dragonflight expansion, which is often seen as a healing expansion due to its responsive development approach. This time around, they are really listening, and not just listening, taking action. My time on the Alpha and private Q&A showed me that Blizzard is doubling down on this player-focused approach. Here's a few improvements that is highlight-worthy. The first is NPC work orders. They recognize the frustration of players in Dragonflight struggling to find crafters during off-peak hours in Dragonflight, where you just wanted to fulfill a very basic work order. So, in The War Within, Blizzard is introducing NPC systems to handle work orders in the new continent. Which means no matter when you play, you potentially can get your items crafted by NPCs, instead of waiting for actual human beings to respond to your trade chat. Then they also have revamped mount animations. After the positive reactions to the new dragon riding animations, Blizzard has gone back to the old world to update the animations for older mounts. For example, Mimi Ron's head now features a new open and closed mouth animation while flying. And this wasn't necessary, but it's a welcome nod to enhancing the player experience even with older content. Now, I don't have footage here, but it's something covered in the closed door press event. But you can definitely try it out for yourself when you get hold of the war within. Other mounts will also be undergoing similar treatment from what we learned. Next is UI overhauls. Blizzard continues to refine the user interface that started from Dragonflight. With the War Within, there's brand new quest icons now to differentiate between profession task, main campaign stories, optional side quests, even flight masters have brand new icons. And these changes might seem minor, but they're part of Blizzard's commitment to lay a solid foundation for the game's futures in the many years to come. Even something as simple as the way they render water. There's been a technical upgrade. In the new expansion first zone that we got to test, Blizzard's devs told us that if you observe how the waves actually hits the shore, it reveals a brand new level of realism, coupled with enhanced physics for water. These are things that doesn't bring Blizzard more dollars in their pockets, it's done simply out of love. And as a side note, Blizzard also mentioned to the creators in a Q&A that they are even exploring new methods to distribute tier sets more freely, further beyond than what they already offer in Dragonflight. And these changes, while some might seem trivial, not even mentioned on the press release, collectively they affirm Blizzard's new renewed focus on enhancing player satisfaction and game quality. It's clear they're investing in both major features, like the Warbands and the Delves, but also at the same time subtle refinements to ensure that WoW remains engaging and responsive to its community's wishes and feedback. Now, playing the WoW within Alpha was a homecoming moment for me, and I think it's largely because of my feelings towards the new expansion coming from Dragonflight, as compared to stepping into Dragonflight after Shadowlands. Shadowlands left many of us disappointed and shattered, it's no secret. Dragonflight was always perceived again as a healing expansion, almost a reset where a lot of people watched on the sidelines as Blizzard focused on correcting costs, rebuilding game fundamentals for a solid future. They completely nuked 
borrowed power systems, a major player complained since we started doing island expeditions in battle for Azeroth. And their commitment in Dragonflight was evident. I've been playing Mythic Plus at the level I want without mandatory maintenance time or repeatable world quest. During the private Q&A, Blizzard again reiterated their departure from the old grind systems of player power, confirming their new approach is here to stay. Their responsiveness was further demonstrated in how they revamped the talent trees and class designs during Dragonflight. While some specs are better than the others, the overall improvements from Shadowland was notable. And this is best reflected in the subscriber growth discussed at GDC 2024. We have come such a long way since the disappointing Shadowlands expansion. And this brings us to The War Within, potentially the most crucial expansion in modern retail WoW. Dragonflight allowed Blizzard to stabilize and return to basics effectively, setting the stage for the team to unleash their creativity in The War Within. And if you look back at the most successful expansions, Legion with its artifact weapons, Class Order Halls, Mage Tower, Wrath of the Lich King with memorable raids like Udwa ICC, MOP with challenge modes, it's clear that standout features are what defines great expansions. And based on everything I've covered in this video, I think you probably see why. Why I say that WoW is back, and it's so bloody glorious to see it back. The War Within builds on solid foundation laid by Dragonflight, which itself corrected cause from the wreckage of Shadowlands, and now WoW is truly ready to soar into a brand new era. And as Magni Bronzebeard would proudly say, we have repaired the wounds of Azeroth. And now let's journey within, a brand new era awaits, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this honest take of mine on the War Within Closed Alpha, and if you want to stay tuned to more developments related to the expansion, I got your back. More exclusive alpha and beta coverage on this new expansion coming your way on this channel, so make sure to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more. A huge shout out to Blizzard for including me in the private alpha, I'm eternally grateful. And speaking of shout outs, a big thank you to all the Patreon subscribers that you see on screen. Thank you for making this channel possible, and if you'd like to support us, the link to our Patreon is in the description below. A friendly reminder, the link to the playlist in the middle of the screen is to that of all my The War Within alpha coverage. And they are all already live, from the 8 new dungeons, to the new raids, to the new zone, the new capital city, the delves, everything is live on this channel, check it out and I'll see you in the next video.